And here's some pictures from Lake George, uh, New York, where they had the New York State Open. Great tournament. There's uh, my cousin Mary and one of the chess players, uh, Ed Small. He's from here, from Binghamton, New York, outside of Binghamton and Vestal. It's really cool. And there's uh, one of the boats. It's at night, so it's a little dark, but it's a pretty cool place. Very, very beautiful, very peaceful at uh, Lake George, New York. And there's a picture of me looking up. I was kind of goofing around there looking up the dress of the... Uh, the Indian statue there and so there's me I'm on the right of course my cousin Mary here's I got getting ready to parasail pretty cool stuff maybe I have the nerve someday I'll try it uh, ducks are all over the place in the lake pretty nice some more scenes during the day on the boats around the area just past the boats there is basically the main drag of Lake George a lot of shops a lot of restaurants a lot of traffic really nice and there's that guy that was parasailing. There he is in the air. And there's another picture of him there. And there he is when he's way up. Now it's funny, when I snap the picture, I want to get some of the boats in the lake in the background. Uh, these two young girls with their kid. I was kidding with them. I said, oh, you're going to be on my YouTube channel. And one girl goes, oh, no. So there's the picture after they walked away of the uh, one of the dock areas in the lake. Pretty nice. And there's the carousel on the far end. They have a little kitty like a park thing where they have, you see on the left there, the thing that goes up and down and drops. It's basically like the huge ones in the big amusement parks, but just for kids. They have a little bumper car set up, like bumper cars on water, a little miniature golf. It's pretty cool. It's basically a kid's park, period. Here's a picture of me at one of the tables. Uh, I was at the Tiki Hotel on Canada Street in Lake George. There's a picture of me. Boy, I'll tell you, when you see a picture of yourself, you can tell how old you're getting. And there's me again. Uh, you'll see if I show the games on YouTube how well I did, good or bad. And there I am again playing. And I'll tell you, it's tough for us old guys to try to concentrate playing chess, but we love to play. So, And there's the main playing hall in the Tiki Hotel. Uh, it's, it's a lot bigger than it looks. It was a really great turnout on both sides. They have a stage on the right-hand side with the uh, high-rated players set a little bit above. And on the left a long set of booths, which was kind of nice, because you got to sit by yourself, just you and your opponent in a booth, and it was pretty cool. And there's Steve there, the uh, tournament organizer. He works for uh, Bill Goitsberg and uh, Continental Chess Association. They run a good tournament. And there's me on the left there, between the young kid and the guy with the white hair there. There's a little better picture. You can see me right next to the kid in the white shirt. And the hall, like I said, it was nice. Uh, a few years ago, they had it a different place in the Tiki. This is much better than they used to have it. And there's me again. That's my last round game. We're just getting ready to start. I'm adjusting my pieces. And there's some more of the players in the playing hall. Me again. Trying to win desperately. And there's the playing hall there. And there is the video and some of the pictures from my time at Lake George, New York for the New York State Open. All right, folks, Sean Cordisco back again. Hope you liked the pictures when I was in Lake George. Wish I got some more, but it's tough finding the time to relax and play chess and take pictures, too. Well, I got some of them there for you from the playing hall and the uh, lake itself. This is round two. I won the first round, so I'm feeling pretty good. I haven't played a... Really big tournament since October 2014. I've played some small ones here at my chess center. but So I won the first one. So I got the cobwebs out. I feel pretty good. I'm white again. Uh, against a young man. It's a 1450 player. Let's get to it. It's going to be a Queen's Gambit declined. Excuse me. I'm black. And the young man is white. I'm rated about 1500. Black is 1450. We'll go through the first few moves here. It's basically simple stuff. All right. It's a game. I've got a pretty good center here. Or he's got a pretty good center, I should say. And I just need to develop. So I decided to fan kettle the light squared bishop. Being the pawn's already here. This bishop's got free reign, but this bishop needs to get out. Knight f3. I fan bishop to e7 first to castle. 
castles, castles, and I go bishop b7. So, here we are. Bishop b3, he's just developing knight d7. I feel a little better now. It's my second game. Of course, when you win the first one, you build your confidence up a little. So, as you go bishop c2, you're going to see later in this game, it gets really complicated. Now, I do have to say, in this game, I was on the two-day schedule, so the first two rounds are game 60. Each side gets 60 minutes. So there's a 10-second delay. Not increment, but delay. And the young man was 10, 15 minutes late. His clock was running. And so he sat down and asked me to put the time back, and I said no. And then he asked me if I had a score sheet. And I said, well, you have to go over to the table and get them like everybody else. And then he sat down and he goes, do you have a pen? And I'm thinking, like, come on, really? <laughs> so I'm not aggravated, but I'm like, you know, come on, man. When I say young guy, he was probably early 20s. C5, and I decide to open it up a little bit. He moves up to queen. I go rook to C8, grab the open file. Okay. I'm playing okay. He goes D5. Not probably the best move. Rook F to E1, maybe. And after pawn takes, pawn takes. Bishop B4. But after D5, I go C4. I decide to push that pawn right through, hit the queen. Queen comes back. Now I play pawn takes. He plays pawn takes. And knight F6. Now, I'm hitting that pawn now three times. It's my queen, bishop, and knight. He's got it guarded once. It's doomed. So, I feel pretty good right now. We're on move 15. I'm pretty far ahead on the clock. Remember, I had the 10, 15 minutes extra that he wasted being late. Bishop f5, hitting my rook. Now, I got a little aggravated with that. If I move the rook here, he's just going to hit me with the bishop. Yeah, I could block with here, but I decided to heckle it and just move the rook back. I'll bring him back later. Queen to c2. g6 to hit the bishop. Now he goes rook a to d1. And I'm looking at the computer here, and he decides, and I'm looking, and I'm looking. I got some extra time here, you know. I decided that, that it might be too complicated after pawn takes, the bishop might have five. Queen takes. Knight takes. Am I too exposed there? This bishop can't sneak up and block because he's got all those pieces. And now his queen is here. What to do? What to do? Now the second choice in the computer is rook to e8, which is interesting. I decided to grab the pawn. Yeah, I might have blown my advantage, but I just didn't want to get into the complications. I really didn't. It happens sometimes. Your confidence is what it should be. He goes bishop, e4. I take the bishop. And this is where he miscues. Now, he wasn't really short on time. He was around move 19, but he was getting down there. Maybe he had 10 minutes left for the rest of the game. Because this game's 60, and he wasted 10, 15 minutes being late. And he completely miscalculates. Completely miscalculates. He should play pawn takes knight. But he decides to go after the bishop. And that loses. If he had played pawn takes, queen c7, bishop takes, queen takes, knight e5. He still might be in the game, even though he's behind. But after he plays bishop takes, I take the queen... Now he figures he's going to get his queen back, and I just move the A rook. And there I am. Up a full rook and a pawn. Game's over. He resigns. And what's he going to do? If he had played bishop takes instead, this shows the computer. I still would have been a habit, only a pawn, so rook takes was the correct move. So I felt kind of lucky that the kid was miscalculated. And I was able to win. So that's two in a row for me. So I'm feeling pretty good. 
Uh, round three would be the longer time control, so I've got past that hurdle of the short games. Those older guys, they, it's a little harder to think. So there you have it, my round two game from the New York State Open 2016. I'm at 2-1-0. This is round two. I hope you enjoyed it. Enjoyed the pictures as well at the beginning of the video. And I want you to remember, if you think chess is just a game, you're not playing it right. Take care, folks. Bye-bye.